What is the best weapon affinity? There are 13 weapon affinities in the game, all of which have room to be incredibly powerful. So let's take a look at all of them and rank them based off how useful they are. Note that all of them are incredibly good and if I rank one low, it doesn't mean that I think it's bad. And I'm gonna rank it to start off from the weakest all the way to the strongest. As a heads up, these are going to be weapon infusions that you gain from either Ashes of War or Whetstones and is gonna exclude somber weapons for obvious reasons. Now for the first two, I'm gonna lump them together because they are kind of overall bad. They're gonna see very use in gameplay, but they do have a moment where they shine. And that is gonna be both quality and standard. And quality has a significant issue. It is rarely useful because since it lowers both your base damage and does not give you a way to really shine above keen or heavy, you're always gonna be behind those two. Pretty much until you're able to get about 70 in strength and 70 in dexterity, quality is always gonna be behind. And before you even wanna do that, you're gonna to wanna to level faith so you can boost up your physical damage with either keen or heavy. So yes, you're pretty much gonna always be behind. You have to be way over level to use quality, but it does have a room where it works. And even then, there's better quality weapons out there, specifically somber weapons that kind of push this niche out. I'm talking about the Dragon Halberg, Stormhawk Axe, Bloodhound's Fang, and the Wheel of Giza, all of which are incredible somber weapons that are good at any stage of the game. Meanwhile, Standard, and Standard does have a moment it's useful in the game, and that's when you first get that weapon. When you first start off the game, and when it's a, not even a plus one, Standard is gonna be better, but eventually, Keen and Heavy are going to surpass it incredibly quickly. When your weapon's like a plus four, plus five, you now just want to be using keen or heavy it's gonna out damage it and of course you get something like flame and strike or any other way to buff up your weapon early on the game and change its diffusion then that is always going to surpass it if you get cold if you get um sacred if you get like flaming strike or anything like that yes you're gonna be doing more damage to that than you're gonna be doing with a standard weapon fire fire is one that works incredibly powerful early on in the game it is genuinely really good it does hit a soft cap incredibly fast in terms of scaling. When I say that, I mean 22 to 26 levels of investment, and it is really good for two-handing a weapon. The split scaling as well as the high fire absorption for a lot of enemies later on the game is going to serve as a problem for this. Not only that, both flame and heavy are going to supersede this damage type later on the game. It does work really, really well, and unlike lightning, it does have a lot of problems. For example, it can get dampened by water or from rain. Not only that, it also removes frostbite, making it so lightning has more potential for more multipliers and having a very similar damage to lightning without having the same level of versatility of having the other more supportive Ashes of War. And because it's so easily dampened, kind of lowers its overall potential. Unfortunately, it is fantastic, but I have to rank it this low. Sacred. Early on, it is a beast. It is going to help you tear through enemies such as death right birds and undead. And not only that, it adds, it gives you something that's better than having a standard damage type early on. This is the quickest one you're going to get. Unfortunately, due to certain boss resistances later on in the game, as well as flame affinity just kind of being better. And in terms of holy damage, you get so many good early game holy weapons such as a halo scythe along with its Ashes of War being able to be used by the much more powerful Lightning builds, as well as anything like the Keen or Heavy builds, it does kind of dampen the fact that it is tied to Sacred. Sacred is fantastic, it is fine, but it only has a niche in which it plays, and that niche is effectively PvP and the Undead, as well as early on in the game when you don't want to use a standard scaling. On to number 9, Poison. This one is an interesting one, good for DOTs, building pressure in PvP, and the Venomous Fang. This is almost like the Awkward Sister of Blood, dealing approximately 6.3% of HP plus another 630, and Hemorrhage dealing about 200 plus 11% of HP. So unfortunately, yes, Poison is typically going to be doing less damage unless it's a boss like Godric. Early on, it's not bad, but you're going to get much further, open up a fight with a Rot Breath, so you can take it much, much further. I will still know that this right here can still be in a fantastic infusion, especially with a Venomous Fang, because when you put the Poison Infusion on that, you're going to get the same amount of damage you're going to get out of Rot, and that cannot be understated. If you open up a Rot Breath, 
and then you were to stack this on top of it, or if you were to use the Ants from Rapier after, let's say, proc and Deadly Poison, you're effectively having two sets of Rot on your opponent. Number eight, Magic. Now this right here, I really, really didn't want to rank it this low, but the reason is, it has so, so many incredible somber weapons that make the most standard Ash of War look less viable, less interesting. Yes, I know, Magic does have some amazing Ash of War, and, but when you look at things like the Glintstone Chris, Moon Veil, the Wing of Estelle, Death Poker, and the Dark Moon Greatsword, it is only because of the fact that so many of those somber weapons are fantastic that it makes things like Loretta Slash or even Carrion Grander seem like it's not really worth investing in. Yes, they can do a fantastic amount of damage and are really great for openings, but in general, it just has so little room because of the other options you're given. And I know somebody's going to pull up the idea of Carrion Phalanx, and I love using Carrion Phalanx, but I will use that on a Lightning build. I will use that on a Keen build, a Heavy build. I'd use that on any build just because it is so good. But I'm always going to use this offhand weapon because I'm not doing it for the damage. Rather, I'm going to be using it to break their stance. Number seven, Occult. This one right here is like the Keen Fusion of Arcane builds. While typically having a higher AR potential than a Keen build, and is much better for, let's say, something with innate bleed on it, because you cannot buff it, you're looking at the cost of either losing a National War or losing the buff on the weapon. But even then, that's not why I ranked it lower. The reason why I ranked it lower is because the biggest drawback is how late in the game you can get it. With the exception of Lifesteal Fist, everything you can get with this are his mid game. And because you're having to do some additional investments into the dexterity and the strength, as well as the arcane in order to get, let's say, the levels, you're not going to have flame grammy strength or the weapon to a high enough level of scaling early enough, typically meaning that Keen is going to surpass it. And because you don't get that supportive Ash where you get from, let's say, the sacred, you're not going to be doing as much damage, which is why I even find lightning to be a better option, because in general, it does kind of lose out on a lot of versatility and uniqueness to the kit. It is great, but you have to wait a specific window of time before it's actually useful. Number six is going to be Lightning. So you may be wondering why I left it lower than Keen on the list. Well, let's look at the benefits. One, it has an incredibly high crit potential. It could use the holy sacred ashes of war and it gets and it gets buffed by environmental effects as well as unlike fire, you could actually use it with frostbite meaning that there's so many ways to increase the damage of this thing. There is going to be, however, some drawbacks. Specifically, the Lindell Knights and the Ancient Dragons are going to be quite resistant to the lightning, kind of dampening how high the AR can get with this weapon. You get this weapon mid-game, and unfortunately, because it is a golden-type infusion, unfortunately, you could only use the golden and the standard Ashes of War with it, which means although you get an amazing level of versatility and buffs with it, and you could use those buffs more than even Sacred could use them, you are still looking at a lot of, of limitations compared to the Keen, Heavy, and a lot of the other infusions. Number five, Cold. Now, I did have a debate between Cold and Blood, and while I personally prefer the Cold Affinity, as it does complement Dex, Strength, and Intelligence builds quite well, and it can work with any one of them, and can have an overall higher DPS than something like Heavy, Magic, or Keen. In order for this to be optimal outside of PvP, it is something you kind of have to build around. I will admit that Cold is especially good on int dex builds who aren't using Moonveil or Wing of Stealth, and often these fold well into new game cycles. Getting in Lierne and increasing your stats early on in the game, the main reason why I put this above Lightning is because you get it earlier on the Lightning. It could work with more stats, it could work with strength, intelligence, or dexterity. You could weave it into a heavy build, a keen build, a lightning build, or really anything as long as it doesn't have fire. And even fire, you could use it to proc off that frost damage. You're really looking for that percent damage to health. No surprise I made it this far up on the list is going to be blood. This one isn't going to surprise anyone. Its damage is insane. It is incredibly easy to optimize. And building bleed is incredibly easy. You really don't need too much game knowledge for it to be powerful. There isn't going to be much to hate about this one. Outside of the build, feeling too cheesy. Typically, I would actually rate these below cold and lighting, but since it's much easier to build and allows for suboptimal builds to nuke down bosses, 
and in a way that is incredibly satisfying, I have to give it some respect. While it doesn't work for every boss, almost all major bosses in the game outside the final boss are incredibly weak to bleed. Number 3 is going to be Flame. Wondering why this one got all the way up here? Simple. It is like fire, but better. Typically hover around the same AR as, let's say, lightning, and with an insane capacity to for self-buffing, Flame on a Fate build is no joke. I mostly rank this one higher due to the Pandit's Curve Swords as well as the Straight Swords. Any type of combo with those weapons are just absolutely insane. And unlike Magic, Sacred, or Lightning, there really isn't an extreme amount of fire somber weapons that supersede Flame. While Blastus Blade is a fantastic option, I would typically use it in tandem with a Flame weapon due to the Flame weapon just having a higher AR. And the Blastus Blade is cheesy, but it's not that cheesy to the point where I could kill a boss before they hit me. As in Blastus Blade, you're expecting to get hit and that's why you're using Taker's Flames. Meanwhile, something like Moonveil or Bolt of Grand Sex, you'd be sniping the boss from a mile away or kiting them and just chunking out their health without getting touched. And because so many of the bosses are weak to fire damage, this right here is just a fantastic option for something like Radagon, and it does work in tandem with a lot of Faith builds. Faith just does fantastic with fire. And to no one's surprise, the two highest on the list is going to be Keen and Heavy. So why am I going with Keen, especially when I criticize it so much? Is it because of its incredible AR and its weapons that can be buffed? No. No, 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 absolutely not. No, the reason why I am actually going for Keen is mostly the Bullet Ashes of War and Blood Flame Blade. The reason why is because I love the Bullet Ashes of War on Keen builds. Everything from the Storm Blade, Bestial Roar, Thunderbolt, Vacuum Slice, and Phantom Slash have the highest scaling with Keen on dexterity. And because of this, the Arumi, which has the highest dex scale in the game, is almost like a catalyst for dexterity builds. It is a beautiful sidearm, a piece that makes everything work together. Because dexterity is the one stat that does not have any talisman or any ability to really cast a spell without investing into faith. And you need to invest a lot into faith for those faith spells to scale, because you ain't gonna get them to scale with dexterity too well. But speaking about dex and faith, there is one thing that can work well together, and that is going to be something like the buffs, specifically Blood Flame Blade. This right here effectively can turn the Nagakiba into effectively a Rivers of Blood. Not a discount Rivers of Blood, but a better one. Now, I'm not going to be using it in this video to show it as a Rivers of Blood. I'm just going to do Sword Dance because it's fun. And typically, it does have a lower AR than something like a heavy build. But in general, it, there is one weapon that does supersede heavy and that is going to be the Guardian Sword Spear, and honestly, I think that just kind of makes up for the rest of it. And the reason why I do have to rank it at number two. Though if I was looking to take down a boss as fast as possible, I'm probably not going to be running a Keen build. I'll probably be running a Power Stance, Lightning, Flame, Blood, or a Cult. And for number one on the list, and to nobody's surprise, is going to be Heavy. Heavy is easily the king. While relative to King in one hand, and outright surpassing King when two-handing a weapon, with the exception of the Garden Sword Spear, which I already mentioned, it sets its place at the top, being the de facto strength build. And honestly, it feels like it. It hits like a truck, and with level investments, in which you're going to hit the soft cap really, really quickly. When I say that, I mean by about 44 levels of investment, you're already the soft cap. For Dex, you're going to need about 70 levels. For Fave, you're going to need about 70 levels. For Occult, all that stuff, you need about 70 levels. But this one, no. It's level 54. And while I talked about how you get a high AR out of all those curved sword weapons with Lightning, Occult, Flame, whatever have you, this right here, you get the Star Fist. And that can easily do a similar amount of damage, but it will poise break the opponent incredibly quickly and incredibly easily. That with having the most versatility of all the Ashes of War tied with Kane, I would have to give this one the number one spot for the best weapon infusion. 
All right, thank you guys for getting this far to the video. Please consider liking and subscribing. I know not everyone is gonna agree with what I have to say about this list. This is just my own personal observation and what I see as the best. Throughout this game, we're all gonna have our own different experiences and certain things are gonna click better for other players than others. Please, if you guys have your own opinions, put them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you guys and have an awesome day.